Welcome back to another shelter in place mini lesson. This one's a little bit different because there was some homework that I need you to do before you watch it. All work, I guess, is technically homework now because shelter in place, but anyway. I need you to go listen to the Shipped to Timbuktu episode of Reply All and come back in about 19 minutes after you've listened to it. If you have already listened, just fast forward like 10 seconds. All right, welcome back. You've listened to the episode now. Remember the first time I heard it, I have an email address that's similar to this guy who lives in Australia. And from time to time, he'll get my emails and he'll forward them to me. And so that part of the episode resonated with me. And then Dale, he's not like Daniel Bowen from Australia. He messes with the people who send him emails. And so the episode, which starts as like this email chain that the host PJ kind of investigates, turns into this really harrowing story of children in a concentration camp. Not where I thought the episode was going the first time I heard it. And what really struck me about that episode is what the leaders did. And the leaders weren't old. They mentioned in the episode that they were like late teens, early 20s. They were called the brown owls. And what really struck me was how they took care of the people around them, how they celebrated the people around them, how they created a sense of normalcy, how they created a sense of community when things were really difficult. And what the host had mentioned was regardless of the circumstance, whether he was reading the journals from the early 1900s or talking to someone in the 2000 teens, they were using the same voice, that regardless of the circumstance, they were communicating the same way and they were carrying themselves the same way. So if we had to, or if you had to define the voice for us as a leadership class, or you as a leader, what would that voice be? What is the voice of a leadership student? The second thing that struck me, and I mentioned it earlier, were the brown owls. The young leaders who stepped up and said, hey, things aren't going the way we want them to go, but let's make the best of it. And especially for those who are more scared and more confused than we are right now. Let's be leaders in these extraordinary circumstances. And so they did that. They created like these merit badges. And if you remember in the interview with Mary, she talked about even in her 80s, she remembers this merit badge she earned when she was a young kid for making a pot light up. Do you remember how you felt about that? about having that sort of schedule and regularity? Oh, it was very comforting. Yeah. Extremely comforting. School went on. So did Previty's Girl Guide Troop, a group much like the Girl Scouts. Classes were taught, badges were earned, and teachers had to get creative. It brings me to my second question is, like the brown owls, what can we do in our community to recognize what others are doing well? If it's someone working at a grocery store, if it's a doctor, if it's a nurse, if it's anyone right now, there are a lot of people going above and beyond. So what can we do to recognize the people in our community? Because I do think we should recognize them. I've listened to this episode multiple times and it's definitely taken new meaning in the midst of what we're going through right now. There's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I think the mark of a true leader is how they act when things are unknown, when things are difficult, when things are, are scary. And right now, they are for a lot of us. And so what can we do right now to step up as leaders? What can we do right now to impact those around us, even though there are so many things that are beyond our control? As cheesy as it sounds, I want to be a brown owl. I want to be like the girl guides from this concentration camp, because I know they made an impact on the people around them people like Mary, who still remember the names of those leaders back then because of how they were treated, because of how Mary was treated by them. I want to be a person like that. And I know many of you want to be a person like that as well. So wrapping up with our two questions. The first question is, what is our voice? As a leadership student at our school or in our community, what is our voice? If a girl guide's voice is to be cheerful and smiling in all difficulties, what should our voice be? as leadership students, regardless of the circumstance that's happening around us. And the second question is, kind of like the brown owls, what can we do in our community to recognize what others are doing well? And then finally, third bonus question, what's your favorite kind of Girl Scout cookie? I'm a, what are the tagalongs, the peanut butter kind? I think tagalongs, but that's, that's just me. I hope you're well, I hope you're getting a lot of rest and looking forward to reading what you guys write in the comments below. Are you doing your uh, leadership weekly thing? Dude, I finished it and I wasn't recording. I finished it. <laughs> and so I'm a little frustrated. I just need to finish this now. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's okay. I feel for, I feel for you. That's terrible.
in there. All right, I'm gonna go do it. My have, have fun. Yeah.